Dozens of wildfires across the West have forced thousands of families from their home. And east of Los Angeles, authorities are blaming arson for a fire that destroyed several buildings. A suspect was arrested in connection to that fire yesterday. CBS News correspondent Jamie Yukis joins us from Idlewild, California. A cloud of smoke 50,000 feet high towered over the San Jacinto Mountains as the Cranston fire consumed thousands of acres, destroyed multiple homes, and forced more than 3,000 people to evacuate, all within a matter of hours. No. Emergency crews battled the fast-moving flames from the ground and the air. Oh my God, that's getting really close to the house. About 200 children from nearby summer camps were hastily evacuated to a nearby high school, some with nothing but a backpack and a box. We've still got a lot of work to do to get it contained. Lee Byers with the um, National Forest you know, Service. He so says the recent heat wave adds another layer of difficulty for firefighters. 105, 110 degrees down in the valleys, and it makes it really hard to stay hydrated. It's just physically draining to be trying to work as hard as you can with that adrenaline flow in those type of temperatures. The fire was allegedly set by Brandon McGlover, who police arrested and charged with five counts of arson. For Buyer, who had to evacuate his own home, this news is particularly upsetting. People are, are being asked to grab pets and their personal belongings and leave on you know a 20 minute notice. To know that it was an intentional start is really frustrating. And CBS News correspondent Jamie Yukas is joining us from Idlewild, California. So, Jamie, what are some of the challenges firefighters are facing as they try to fight these different, the different fires uh, across the state? Well, as you can imagine, this one particularly challenging because they've had triple degree heat. You've had temperatures in the hundreds, Vlad. But I want you to look at this. They're also fighting the fact that these fires move so, so quickly. This is just one of the five homes that was destroyed that we were talking about a few minutes ago in that story. And you can see it's still smoldering. So they have a very large fire as well and a lot of hot spots. All it takes is one ember and such dry vegetation here for that fire to just quickly move off and create just a firestorm really up hillsides and then taking out homes. When you talk about 4,700 acres doing the math, that's about seven and a half miles of fire at this point in time in the morning. The sun's just coming up. They think it's about 5% contained, so they're going to have to work on containment today again in that extreme heat because that's not supposed to end until at the very earliest Friday. Now, I want to show you in these types of fires the very unusual thing that ends up happening too. This house destroyed. The house next door, completely fine. It's standing. There's not a scratch on it. I walked over. Uh, the plants are on the deck. People could go eat outside on uh, their deck. So it's one of those things that I just always think that this speaks volumes of how quickly fire can spread and take out one home while the neighbor is absolutely fine. Yeah, and in your piece you mentioned an arrest was made in connection to the Cranston fire. Do we have any details about that? I mean, I feel like maybe one third of the time we hear about an arrest when it comes to these wildfires and it just boggles the mind. Why would anybody, you know, light a match or be careless with fire at all? What can you tell us about this? That's really the big question here, Anne Marie, and a really good question. Brandon McGlover uh, lives in Southern California. Apparently, what we were told is that he was spotted intentionally lighting fires along uh, the roadway, and people were calling the fire department and police saying, hey, we see this guy. They were able to arrest him, uh, according to Cal Fire, in 20 minutes. But in that 20 minutes, that fire grew from 25 acres up to almost 3,000, forcing evacuations of thousands of people. Uh, we don't know why he would have done this at this point in time. Uh, they're going to have to investigate that and look into it. I can tell you I did a quick check of social media, did a quick check uh, of arrest records in his area of where he lives in Southern California. He doesn't have much of a profile. Uh, there's nothing really to be seen about him. So we're really going to have to work on that and figure out why someone would do that, especially here in California, where, as you've seen for days, we have fires burning in Northern California. We now have fires burning here in Southern California. And all it takes is just one 
at one really quick ember to move this along. You have breezes, extreme heat, and drought for years. Uh, it's like a tinderbox. So the minute you light something on fire, it's just going to go. And, and you know what's especially in ho horrible and sad about all this is, and we don't know what it's like in here in New York City. We're in a concrete jungle. But when you see people's homes, the homes that they've had in some cases for many years, entire lifetimes, wiped away in less than a couple of hours, uh, you, have you spoken to anybody who's lost uh, their homes because of what this individual did? Not at this point in time. I can tell you, Vlad, though, the one thing that struck us when we came over here, I'm kind of putting my photographer on the spot, there is uh, a nameplate on this house, and you can see that it's been burned away. Uh, what we learned about this particular area here in the mountains is that a lot of people have family cabins, uh, cabins that have been in the family for generations. Uh, there's also, this is a really big area for summer camps, so kids, uh, as you saw in the story a little bit ago, literally had to just grab their backpack and run out of summer camp. So this is an area I'm sure that there's been a lot of memories created for families as they've been coming up here, likely for generations. So uh, we are going to work on that, of course, today and see if we can talk to, to anyone who has lost their home. Luckily, in this case, I can tell you at one time, 600 homes threatened. Uh, we lost five, and that's what we know of so far. Now, with the sun coming up, that may have changed overnight. Uh, so we'll get back to you on that a little bit later, too. All right, Jamie, you because you are in Idlewild, the entire town forced to run from these flames. Thank you so much.